if you're lucky enough in your life, then you have a thing. I talked a little bit incidentally um, during my last tea update about how I was at 221 Beacon and uh, about how really bad, actually, the post-con crash was after I got back from 221B. And I've been coming to the conclusion that that space, that that community is my thing. Forgetting for a moment that I'm talking about my own personal thing, my own personal place and time and community. Just imagine this feeling, or if you're fortunate enough to have something like this in your life, take a moment to remember You are arriving at your thing. You are approaching it. You see it, and it's getting closer because you are moving toward it or it's moving toward you. And all at once, you feel your heart open. You feel like your complete self. I've known for four years, since the first 221B Con, that the... The convention and the community that came up around it was very important to me. I knew that. I didn't anticipate this year how I would feel walking up to the hotel and feeling something that I didn't even know was there release in the center of my chest. Just open up. I realize how incredibly cheesy that sounds. Before I'd had that experience, I probably would have thought it was really, really cheesy. But that's what happened, and it's how I realized that that place is my place, and that is my thing. That is my space where I can be the most complete version of myself that I know. And not only just be the most complete version of myself that I know, but have that self projected outward and have a positive response given back to me. That may be the really important part of it, actually. I've spoken about it with with John, with my husband, um, because when you start having a thought that, you know, you can be your complete self somewhere that isn't with your spouse, there's some confusion and guilt that might come up with that. Like, oh no, I'm married to this person and I'm supposed to be, they're supposed to be like my happy place and everything about that. So we talked about it and I absolutely, (laughs) I love John so much and he is my happy place. He is 100% supportive and understanding in everything that I do. However, there are some aspects, especially in terms of fandom things in particular, where he's supportive, but he's not really there with me. And that's the difference. I can really go off about some fandom thing that I am super pumped about, and he'll just kind of be like, Cool. As opposed to bouncing that energy back at me, because that's just not where he is. Whereas when I'm among the people at 221BCon and to an extent other conventions, I can put that energy out there. I can put it out there with the most force and passion and excitement that I can possibly muster. And somebody will go, yes! If you are very lucky, you have something like that in your life. You have a place you can go, a person you can talk to, whatever it is, somewhere where you can put your whole energy out into the universe and something will answer it with equal strength. And if you are very lucky and you have that thing, you know what it feels like to no longer be in the presence and the space of that thing. And that's why the week after the convention was so hard for me. And the second moment of epiphany really came 
after I'd managed to come up out of the funk and I realized that I was back in a comfortable fog, I felt enshrouded. I mean, fogged up really is the term. My therapist described it as contraction, contracting. You go to this place where you're able to allow yourself to expand, and then you're no longer there and you have to contract back down. And that's a process that hurts. I didn't like being back in that fog. I didn't like the realization that I had something of a comfort zone there. I think in a lot of ways, we, we build up those fogs. We contract as a method of survival, even social survival, or just because we feel we need it to protect ourselves. I think my goal lately, um, just in life, and uh, probably for a while without even realizing it or being able to articulate it this way, is to find more of those spaces where I can allow myself to expand. To be the most complete version of me that I know. I think I've been finding some of that through my Zen practice. You know, meditation allows for silence. I mean, I talked a bit in the meditation video about the silence between thoughts, the peace. Sometimes I know on a visceral level that I've reached a kind of checkpoint um, in meditation when I feel that same sort of release in my chest. So finding a way to bring that inner sense that I get from my meditation or from being in the high energy of my thing, being able to bring that into other parts of my life. That's, uh, that's kind of the challenge and the question and what's on my mind today. So thanks everybody for watching. This has been Now Z here, a weekly babble blog and occasional transition update. Uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe if uh, you want to see more. My name is Ronan and this is Wadsworth. Always be changing.